Hey everyone, Mr. Clark here. Uh, just gonna show you a couple methods that you could use for simplifying radicals. Uh, so method number one, the first method I'm gonna show you is factoring out perfect squares. Now to use this method, you might wanna make a list of perfect squares like I have here. Um, I ended up mapping out one squared through 20 squared. Um, you know, this can go as high as you need it to be, but I figured 20 was overdoing it, so I stopped there. Um, anyways, let's take a look at how to use this method. So the first problem we're looking at is the square root of 27. Um, so I'm gonna look at my list of squares. I'm looking for 27. As you can see, it's not there. Now, using this method, you're, you're basically just gonna look at all the smaller perfect squares and try to figure out if one of them's a factor of, of the, you know, the square root you're trying to, trying to find a factor of. Um, in this case, nine ends up being our match. 27 divided by nine is three. So we're gonna end up using that. Now, before I go back to the problem, I want to give you guys a little shortcut. If you don't find your original term on the list of squares, you can actually jump to half of that term because it's actually not possible for anything in between half of the number and the original number to be a factor that we would use. So, you know, half of 27 is 13.5. If I look right here, we can actually skip investigating 25 and 16. They're not going to be factors of 27. Um, now, if you don't want to use a shortcut, you think that's too much extra thinking, um, you, you can check those numbers, that's fine, 27 divided by 25, decimal, 27 divided by 16, decimal. Um, but, you know, the, you could have skipped those two numbers. Anyways, so we get to 9, 27 divided by 9 is 3, that we have a match here. We have a perfect square that's a, that can be factored out. So we're going to take the square root of 27, we're going to break it into the perfect square that factors out, square root of 9, and then the term that it would need to get multiplied by to make the square root of 27, so we got the square root of 3. Now... The, we chose the perfect square for a reason because we're going to be able to pull a number out of the radical now. So the square root of 9 is 3. That comes out. Uh, the square root of 3. Now, we always want to double check any radicals at the end of a problem to see if we missed a factor that might come out. Now, if we look here, um, the only number that's lower than 3 is 1. And 1's a factor that we don't even bother with when we use this method. Because if I, if I factored out 1, I'd still be left with square root of 1 times square root of 3. So it really wouldn't save me any aggravation. I'd still have the square root of 3. Um, so nothing comes out. We're going to leave our answer as the square root of... Or sorry, as 3 radical 3. Now looking at the next example here, we have the square root of 108. Uh, if I look at my list of squares, 108's not there. I'm going to use my shortcut and go down to where 54 would be, half of 108. So I don't even have to bother with those numbers. Now 108 divided by 49, you're going to get a decimal. It doesn't work. 108 divided by 36, we do have a match there. 108 divided by 36 is 3. So we're going to take the square root of 108. I'm going to break it up into the square root of 36 times the square root of 3. So square root of 36, we chose that for a reason. 6 is coming out. Square root of 3, again, we're going to double check over there. I know we just did the same number on the last problem, but just, just so you guys get in the habit, uh, nothing comes out of the square root of 3, so that is staying put in the radical. Your final answer would be 6 root 3 or 6 radical 3, 6 square root of 3. There's a bunch of different ways that you can say it. Um, all right, so method number two, factor trees. Um, some of you guys might prefer method one. Some of you are going to like fact, uh, factor trees better. Um, so, you know, you can use whatever method you like. Uh, looking at the square root of 27, I'm going to break it apart into factors. Now, just like with factoring out a perfect square, you don't want to bother using one at all. It's not going to help you with anything. Um, so with 27, the first two factors that came to mind for me were 3 and 9. Um, so 3 is a prime number, so I can stop factoring that right there. I'm not going to break it into 3 and 1 or anything. Uh, but 9 still does have some factors other than 1, so we have 3 times 3. Now when we're using factor tree, we only care about the end of, end of the branches um, when it comes to you know, what we're about to do, where we circle numbers and see what stays inside the radical, what goes outside of the radical, and, and, and all that. Um, now, looking at the end of the branches, 3, 3, and 3 are the numbers that are in play here. 9 is not the end of a branch. It keeps going, so we're not worried about 9. You wouldn't be able to circle that at all. Um, so the way that factor trees work, you find a pair of a number at the end of the branches. So I have a 3 here, I have another 3 here. we got a pair of 3s. One 3 comes out. So one number comes out for each, each pair. 
So pair of threes, one three comes out. This three does not have anything to pair with because the other two, the other threes have been used. Uh, it's by itself. Now any term that's by itself that doesn't have a pair stays inside the radical. Um, so we end up with three root three for our answer here. Now one way that, that you could use to remember this, uh, this three has a date, it's going out of the radical. Uh, this three does not have a date, it's staying home. So that's one way to remember it. Uh, taking a look at the square root of 108, uh, you know, same example as above, just looking at it a different way. Uh, we can break that up into, uh, there's, a, there's multiple factors for this term. You could have done 36 and 3, um, and I'm sure there's some other ones I'm forgetting. I ended up going with 54 and 2. When you have an even number, one, one easy thing to remember is you know that 2 is going to be one of the factors. So 2 is a prime number, that's the end of that branch. So I go over to 54. That's another even number, so I'm going to use 2 again, 2 and 27. 2 is a prime number. We're done there. Uh, we can break 27, same number we just used, actually, into 9 and 3. And again, 3 is a prime number. We're done there. We're going to break 9 into 3 and 3. So now at the end of our branches, we have 3, 3, 3, 2, and 2. So I'm going to circle a pair of 3s. 1, 3 comes out. I'm going to circle a pair of 2s. 1, 2 comes out. Now this 3 is left over by itself. It's staying in the radical. Now, any terms that come outside of the radical, they get multiplied together on the outside. Any terms that stay inside the radical, they get multiplied back together on the inside. Now, here, we have 1, 3 coming out because of that pair. We have 1, 2 coming out. 3 times 2 gives us 6. Uh, here, we just have radical 3 staying home, so it's staying put. Um, so our answer there ends up being 6 radical 3. So those are two methods. Um, you can use whichever one you like. Hopefully, that was helpful.